Howdy, it's Ingus from IGS Electronics and today we're going to have a look at the new drive which is manufactured by uh, Schneider Electrics, one of the world uh, leading, again, one of the world leading uh, manufacturers in automation industry. It is a uh, ATV312 family, or ATV 312 uh, whichever way you go, it's family of the drives is uh, one of these. These are very common used drives all across the industry, especially in UK. And uh, the one I've got in here, it's a single uh, through three phase drive, which is a 1.5 kilowatt to horsepower. And uh, we are going to look into it to have a little local setup. First, first you're going to run a, 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 in a local setup. Do some motor setups and uh, pretty much get you going on the first instances and will perform a, uh, a full uh, factory reset if you do happen to buy a drive that is being used. So uh, let me get ready and uh, first thing first we're going to do is do the factory reset. Right, before we go ahead I quickly show you uh, what the drive looks like inside. That's what it looks inside. Oop. It's a nice little... Uh, uh, segregation of terminals. This is where your uh, single phase would go in. So it's, uh, L L1 would be your uh, uh, phase, and then and L2, which is where the way they do it, but is L2 will be your uh, 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 neutral. And then obviously down here is your three phases coming out, going directly to the remote. And these are your front terminals, which you're going to be using in second video to run some remote connections. But another thing as well, I quickly run through and show you the quick breakdown of the menu, how to go from place to place. So if you see down there is a mode and escape. So to go between the modes, which is your local and remote, you could hold for three seconds. As you can see now it's going into the remote mode, hold it again, you go back to the local mode, quite straightforward, I like that. And then, and then, uh, it's, it's, and then uh, going from, um, as you can see down there is little dials to keep jumping around, little dots. Which means you are not able to enter menus. As you can see, it doesn't do it. It controls your frequency, it does your frequency and things like that. But it's not going to let you do anything. So to be able to enable that function, you have to hold Escape for two seconds, roughly. And as you can see, all the all the all the lights are uh, uh, sort of jumping all together. So that way, now when you click the middle button, it, it, it enters you into setting, uh, sort of a, in a menu where you can start doing some settings. And I'll quickly show you the, the breakdown of what those settings are. So that's what it looks like. It's got, uh, it's got roughly, what's that, nine, nine, ten groups or something like that. Quickly run you through what each group does. And again, to go between the groups of the menu is the first one is a reference point, second one is settings, Sec uh, other, uh, the third one DRC is the motor, then is an IO, uh, self-explained, IO mode, and then is a, a CTL, I think uh, is a, we could call the command, uh, it's, it's going to be command, application functions, then is a fault management, then is a communications, and then is a monitoring. You will not in a basic setup, you will not need any of those uh, settings to play with unless you want to go in deeper with different types of uh, uh, things that you can do, which this drive actually has a whole, whole load of extra functions that you can play with. But if we, we're only going to be looking at just getting us going, setting a motor up and things like that. And if you happen to buy the drive used, I would strongly suggest you to perform a factory reset which is uh, in a DRC uh, mode, which is our uh, motor control mode. So we, and, uh, we, it is part, part of the, as you can see down there, we're going to be, uh, as you see down there, factory reset. So to get to that one, again, we go down DRC, click DRC, and then we need to go to, func uh, to, to code called FCS, we go down to FC. FCS, where's the FCS? Did we just skip it? FCS, enter it, and then it says down here we need to uh, 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 go to a thing called INI. We go down to INI, and then it says we have to hold it for two seconds. And as it was, once it performed that uh, uh, reset, it will go back to. And oh, that tells you the drive has been reset to factory settings and then just 
escape and now as you can see the whole thing went back to uh, factory setting as it would be more or less you getting out of the box so uh, now uh, we can uh, uh, pretty much get ourselves into and start setting these things up okay before we go ahead I quickly show you a uh, access level parameter just in case you do want to go into deeper uh, you do need to change some uh, some of the parameters and things like that there's a there's an access level actually for this drive so uh, to do that go to thing called a CTL LAC and in there you'll find the levels down here and then and, and, and if you want to save level hold the button in here and as you can see it, it flashes like that it basically uh, gives you access to that level I don't need to change my access level so uh, uh, in case you do need it that's how you do it so to get us going first thing what we need to do is uh, get our motor parameters set into the drive so pretty much the drive knows what motor we are going to be using let me just quickly zoom out and to get that, all that data it is on your motor data plate that is the king pretty much in understanding what uh, parameters you need to enter inside the drive let me zoom back in so to do that we need to go to the parameters called the parameter group called DRC and uh, it says let's get in there by the way when you are in a remote mode uh, you don't have to press escape to access the parameters you just can go into them so but but drive has to be in a start mode so if you want he's not going to work in a start one so let's do that let's go to our DRC and the first parameter is going to come up is BFR I don't even know if it's BFR but it looks like BFR to me so in this parameter we uh, pretty much tell tell the uh, drive what is the standard frequency we're running at and in UK it's a 50 and the next one it's gonna be a nominal voltage on the motor number plate which is 230 which is standard again and next one is going to be the uh, what uh, maximum frequency we're running our uh, we we running we want to run our mower. In our case, it's 50. You can go higher. Again, I have mentioned in other videos why what there's a con uh, considerations needs to be made before you do that. I'm not going into that. Otherwise, it's going to be repeating myself. So uh, we're not doing that. So keeping that as 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 it, as it is. And the next one is a nominal current. <sighs> current is basically, it's on your data plate. It shows you uh, what sort of uh, amps uh, the maximum it can, motor can take. In our case, it's 1.9 amp. Because this drive is 1.5 kilo, it's got the range between uh, the minimum two, which already I have set it in there. Minimum two and maximum, I haven't tried the maximum. So I, in a normal cases, I would set that about 1.8 amps, keeping away from the maximum to the motor. He's not uh, keeping yourself nice and cool. But in our case, because that's 0.37 kilowatt and this is 1.5 kilo uh, drive, that's the minimum we can get. It, for the test purposes, it'll be just fine. Next one is a nominal motor speed. That's standard. It puts that inside about four pole. Uh, four pole uh, dual one motors, they are all standard of 14, uh, 1420 uh, RPM in this game. The next one, which I first drive ever had to do, is uh, put in your cost sign. Again, you can find that cost sign on the drive. And in my case, is uh, uh, 0.7. Cost is pretty much your power factor. Uh, of what motor it does, so I presume this drive's got power factor corrector inside a uh, uh, drive itself, so he will know what he needs to correct. And power factor works from zero being the worst, and one being the best, and it's a huge, huge factor in 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 all the uh, automated well, in all of the electrical industry, power factor is a big, big uh, uh, thing that you people need to look in and pay attention to it because. Low power factor costs you a lot of money and all whole load of other problems that come in. So it has to be corrected, but that's a whole load of big subject for uh, maybe some other time in the future. Okay. So we set that one up. So that's basically is our motor data is now being input into our motor and is pretty much ready to go. Next thing we're going to set up is our uh, basic parameters which comes down to uh, in settings, which, which we'll be able to assess our uh, different types of uh, acceleration, decelerations, and 
assign some of the uh, points and things like that if we do need to but that's again part of the very basic parameter setup I'm not going to get into heavy heavy start, uh, system in here because we don't need it we're just trying to get the drive going as optimal as possible and and safe as well so uh, uh, let's get to uh, setting, uh, uh, doing the basic setup Okay there, before we go ahead, I quickly show you how to auto-tune as well the drive, which is uh, part of the setup that the uh, Schneider uh, wants us to do. But whatever reason, I've never performed one of those, but in our case, we're going to do it. So to do that, uh, once you, because the critical is to make sure all the parameters in the data plate, uh, let me just get a bit closer, in the data plate has been entered correctly for the auto-tune to really work correctly. And one of the key ones is that cost sign. So to do that, we go for DRC, go to parameter called uh, FUN, I think it's FCS. Did we miss there? This one. Yes, FUN, click that one. And uh, you go no, it's a yes, and once you click that, you will hear the drive go, the motor go a little bit forwards and make sure there's no, that would, uh, not like forwards but basically you can hear the noise you quickly go through the settings check everything and says done once it's done once it's done that's done so uh that's pretty much uh what we're going to concentrate today in 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 uh, in, uh, in uh these uh, th this group of the parameters the next group of parameters we quickly jump into uh, is the settings in settings you obviously uh you can add uh, you can enter uh, yeah, enter some of the data. Ring comes down to accel acceleration and acceleration. This is like our first acceleration. By default, is three. We change that to one. Why not? Uh, the acceleration. We change that to one. Obviously, this is all personal preferences to everybody who needs to adapt. Pretty much is how fast the motor is going to stop on a stop sign. And there's obviously different types of stops you can go through. But again, that's more more advanced so uh i usually just leave if it, if you do need it it's again for that purposes is you need to look, uh, read the manual and really understand what you are doing down there with the with the with what you are trying to achieve the next one is going to be uh, the uh, lsp which is going to be a uh, the current oh in here we can actually say what it's going to be our overload and in our case and uh, wait a sec that's not that one in LSP, it's, it's, oh, it's a low low frequency in this one. In, in, in here, the, in a low frequency, you pretty much can say what frequency you want to uh, drive never to go below. So when you do run the potentiometer and things like that, in, in our case, you can leave it at zero, but let's say you don't want the frequency ever go below uh, 30 hertz and things like that. That comes down as well when, uh, when, when what, what, depending what motor is running. If it's got heavy loads, you don't really want to go below uh, certain frequencies because that's just going to... Uh, affect your torque and everything like that but again that's uh, something different but usually you can set your minimum frequency in here and the next one is obviously above frequency again you can go higher but again there's a, a, a consequences can be maybe not maybe yes and the next one this is the this is where we set up our, our, our overload current so we make sure that we, on our data plate it was 1.9 we're going to set that to 1.8 keep it away from uh, save that one keep it away from overheating the drive and at least we'll let us know way beforehand when something is not running as it should do and uh, and after that uh, the the uh, that's about it for when it gets to there's obviously a load more other other settings you don't really need to do that to get this drive going to get you rolling and get you pretty much bowling and for that that is it that's all you need to do to get your drives ready set up to the motor ready to rock and roll all you need to do jump the modes now into local mode and press run and you can control speed by your front by default your front dial can be used for your uh, speed control other than that that's it your drive is ready to roll every time you want to start and stop you can just use the front keypad it's got a bit, bit low the fan but it is what it is it's protecting your drive keep the drive nice and cool and uh, that's about it 
uh, to get this Schneider Electric ATV 312 drive in to basic local mode. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoy it. And if you liked it, please click like and I will see you in the next video.